Hello and welcome to another edition of the Silverbird Selection. This is just going to be a quick video to tide you over while I'm working on a more comprehensive production. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the cassette tapes that the Silverbird range produced. As you know normally I would look at the packaging of a game when I'm reviewing it but I wouldn't look at the tapes because the tapes are normally loading. So this may not be of much interest to most of you but it's happening anyway. So let's take a look at those tapes. Right then, so what I've done for this video is go through Firebird's range of budget titles from the Silver range and Silverbird range, take a look at all the tapes and then I've picked various titles out throughout the history, throughout the three or four year history of the range and chosen the tapes that are all different in that range. So we're going to start with one of the earlier releases, Chicken Chase. This is what the cassettes look like for the earlier Silver range. So as you can see, it's red text on a label printed on a black cassette typically. It's got the Firebird logo on it, the name of the game, uh, the name of the system, and the loading instructions and a bit of copyright information. So that's what they look like to start with. That then progressed on to later in the Silver Range, we had a game like Special Agent, that was released in 1987. And by this point, uh, the tape color had generally changed to a sort of gray or cream color. Uh, the logo and everything on the cassette inlay is pretty much the same as the original ones. Uh, one thing that was added typically was the company that actually wrote the game. In this case, it was Danish Designs. Uh, otherwise, the label is pretty much identical. And then moving on to uh, an anomaly, if you like, in that early range, the gold range, 299. This is Hyber Blob. Again, that's pretty much identical. Uh, they didn't do any special labels for those games on the tapes. They still had the grey cassettes. Uh, the author of the game, Sam Manthorpe, in the corner again there. But otherwise, it's exactly the same. So while the packaging was different, the tape was exactly the same. So we then move on to the Silverbird range, and I've picked out Oh No, which was a 2 99 game, but the 1 99 game cassettes were the same at the point when these things were originally started in 1988. So there we go, this is Oh No, and as you can see, not much difference again from the Silver Range packaging at this point. It's still got the Firebird logo on, not Silverbird, still got the author of the game in the corner and all that kind of stuff. This one is a black tape again rather than a grey one. I think it just varied from one to another, there was no consistency. You can probably find the same game in different coloured cassettes in all honesty. Uh, so yeah at this point it had been rebranded as Silverbird on the packaging but was still Firebird on the cassette so that's marginally interesting I suppose. Then we move on to a slightly later release from the Silverbird range, Cheapskate in the 199 packaging this one and this is where we still got a printed uh, adhered sticker onto the, on the tapes on both sides uh, but as you can see the design of that has changed. We've now got the Silverbird logo on the cassette tape. Otherwise, it's pretty similar. It's blue text though rather than red. Uh, none of the nice grey gradient that the earlier ones had. Um, it's just a plain white label. Uh, still got the author of the game in the corner as well. But yeah, blue text um, on a white label. And on this one, it's a black cassette. So let's move on and look at some of the later these were sort of late 88 or 89 releases now. So Peter Packrat uh, was released in the Silverbird packaging. And this is where Silverbird then moved on to printing directly onto the cassette. So you can see it's printed on the cassette with blue text. Uh, Silverbird logo again. Uh, but it's only printed on one side. There's nothing on the opposite side. So it seems like this was probably a cheaper option than the nice printed label the sticker on the cassettes this is probably a cheaper option to actually print straight onto the tape a uh, slight anomaly to that nearly everything was done with a blue text on the printing the only one i could find that was different was international speedway which was done with red text otherwise exactly the same you can see they're pretty much identical other than the color of the text again don't know why that happened but it did and just to finish things off because i've got tapes all over the place now this compilation 123, which I have shown before, this was a slight anomaly again, pretty similar, but you can see it says 123 in the corner there and got the name of the two games on one side. This was printed on both sides because it's got Rock and Wrestle on the other side. So just to finish things off then, here's all of the tapes side by side. You can see the evolution of the packaging and also the cassettes all in one shot, almost, because I can't quite fit it all in. I've got tapes all over the place, so there you go. 
as I said, probably not a very interesting video for most of you, but if you manage to stick through it all and stay awake, then thanks for watching. If you've got any thoughts about what I've shown here, then let me know in the comments. And that'll do for this video. I'll be back with one that I promise will be more interesting in the very near future. Once again, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.